Hello and welcome to the Property Empress podcast. I'm your host for today, Anna, Property Empress Pierce. And unfortunately, I'm on my own today. Drew, is, well, we have a new Airbnb property and Drew is currently dressing it this week. So unfortunately, he's, he's not able to join us. So he does send his apologies. But you have me. I'm going to be talking today about the new EPC regulations and specifically the grants that you can actually get to help add value to your property to get them up to the C rating and potentially have all that work done for free, up to £50,000 done potentially for free of charge, or in some cases, a a small uh, contribution towards the cost. But I'm going to come on to that in due course. First of all, I just want to say sorry for last week's audio. Unfortunately, I don't even know. We've had some technical gremlins in the office over the last week. (laughs) So I don't quite know what that was about. But yeah, I, it was the best that we could get of the mics. Basically, my microphone wasn't working properly. So we ended up just having to use the recording from my laptop. So it wasn't ideal, but at least you got all the content, which hopefully made up for it. In today's episode, I am going to be talking about the EPCs. Just to be completely clear and for complete transparency, I'm not an expert. I'm talking about this from a landlord's point of view that kind of, and I'll talk and I'll talk, share a little bit more about this, but I came across this EPC assessors that do these uh, or helps landlords to apply for these grants. Thought it was absolutely amazing and just really want to share with other landlords because it's just been a really incredible um, journey that I've gone through as a landlord. And I think it's, I just don't think enough people know about it. So that's why I'm sharing a little bit more about it. So I'm going to talk generally, but I am going to talk about, I will happily share the chap that I'm talking to. His name's Ramsey. I'm really happy to share his contact details and I'll put them in the show notes as well. So if you want to speak to someone, you know, that can potentially help you do the same, then hopefully, you know, you can reach out to Ramsey. I'm sure he'll be happy to help. I'm going to start by very briefly looking at, I mean, I'm going to really take it back to basics. So let's have a look at what is an EPC. So an EPC is an energy performance certificate. They actually were bought in, I think, let me check my notes, in 2007. It was part of the EU directive. So the idea really was to get, well, the, the, I think buildings contribute um, almost 40% of the UK's energy consumption. So the idea was to try and get buildings to be more energy efficient, therefore being better with climate change and obviously um, being more environmentally friendly, but also saving money for the people living in the property. It's not costing so much, particularly in the winter, to heat the properties. So the EPCs were bought in, particularly when you're buying a property or you're renting a property, it gives you a good indication of how much it's going to cost to run the property. So that's been in that's been a legal requirement for quite a long time. If you're selling or renting a property, you have to have an EPC. They normally cost about £40, so it's not particularly expensive. However, and it is worth noting that when you have an EPC assessor come for £40, they make a lot of assumptions. Sometimes they look at the walls and they might assume that there's cavity wall insulation, for example. Um, in order to be able to check that it hasn't failed or that there's cavity wall insulation that's not failed, they have to do a drill test and a lot of them don't do it. It's, you know, it's just a standard assessment that you're doing, but you can pay and have a more thorough assessment done. So they're a little bit, they can be a little bit, I was going to say vague, not entirely correct. It's also still a little bit subjective. If you speak to one energy assessor and then speak to another one, they might have slightly different views on it and potentially have slightly different ratings. So it's not a perfect process. So just to make that really clear from the outset, the new EPC regulations are very much for the rented sector, certainly, is very much around helping landlords to take any properties that are under a C rating and get them to a C rating to be able to rent out. And it's taking, it's they're giving a good few years to do this. So at the moment, the current requirement is that any rental properties, whether it's a new tenancy or an existing tenancy, needs to be an E or above. So F, G are not allowed. And then from 2025, all new tenancies have to be a C rating. And from 2028, all tenancies, so existing tenancies as well, need to be a C rating as well. So we have got a few years to do the changes, but there are these grants that are available. So part of all the changes that they're bringing in, because it's not really very fair for everyone to be lumbered with all these big expenses, trying to get their homes up to a certain standard, They've actually brought in this thing called an energy company obligation, like an eco ECO. Um, and it's and it what they're doing is they're getting the energy companies to foot the bill, and then they're using their this money to offer grants to landlords to be able to get the rating from, like I said, up to a C rating, from lower to a C rating potentially. 
So, and that's what I want to really be talking about, the grants that are coming that are already, you know, you can already apply. There's actually been phases. We're on the fourth phase. This is the fourth and final phase. And it's the next three years. I think it was, I think if I read rightly, it was like four billion pounds or something that they are offering to help homeowners to bring their properties up to scratch. And when I say homeowners, I'm talking specifically about landlords, but there are also grants available for if you're for your own home. Um, and it also applies to commercial properties. I'm talking mainly about buy select properties, um, but you can get commercial properties. There are also exemptions as well, I should probably say, to the EPC regulation. It's mainly uh, listed buildings, that's the one that people always ask me about. If, but if it's like a temporary building, um, if it's a holiday let for less than four months, there are certain exemptions. But I'm kind of talking if you have a buy select and you know you have to get it to a C rating, uh, these are the grants that are available basically. So in terms of the grants, you start with what work needs to be done. So the best place to start is if you have, hopefully you have an existing EPC or if not get an EPC uh, assessment done. And on the EPC assessment, it will show you kind of, first thing it does is say this is a EPC rating of C, D, E, whatever it is. And then it summarizes um, where you are, where like what it currently is, what the potential is. So say you're an E rating, I might say it can be potential to get to a C or a B. And then it summarizes all the different aspects that has been assessed and whether they're good or not, <laughs> to put it mildly. I have an example EPC here. And just to, just to read a couple to you, just so that you know, it talks about wall, solid brick as built, no insulation, brackets assumed. So again, like I say, some items they do um, assume. And then it says rating, very poor, because <laughs> the wall insulation is quite a key one. Then you have things like boiler and radiator, mains, gas, good. You have things like uh, fully double, like windows, fully double glazed, average. <laughs> this is like a report card for a property. And then it goes on, if I can find the right sheet, then it goes on to say uh, changes you could make and it breaks it down. I think it's so useful. I, honestly, I think this is the best place to start. So for this particular property that, by the way, isn't one of my properties. I literally just put in a random postcode in Northampton and found an EPC that was EPCE. But the, the current for this is EPCE potential is B. So it then breaks it down. It says step one, increase loft insulation to 270 millilitre, uh, milli milliliters, millimeters. So then it says typical insulation cost. So it's 100 to 350 pounds. It's actually pretty straightforward to increase your loft insulation. You can actually do it yourself, make, making sure you do all the right requirements or you can pay someone to do it. But it's, couple, you know, between 100 and 350 pounds according to this. And it will typically cost you a yearly saving of, oh, my eyesight's not good enough to read. I've printed this too small, 38 pounds a year. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be a complete game changer because it's just increasing the loft insulation, but it is the first thing that they talk about. Um, step two, and that will take you from an E to an E. <laughs> um, step two, I'm sure that there will be some method to why they do it in this order. But step two, it talks about internal or external wall insulation. So on, on walls, I've realized I've just blitzed through this. It, older properties often have the, the solid brick wall. So it basically means that to insulate the walls, you either have to add something to the inside or the outside of the wall. If it's a terrace property, you're just doing the external walls. So if it's a terrace property, you have two walls, you add something to the internal or external. If you have a semi-detached, it'd be three. If you have a detached house, it'd be four, potentially four walls. So if it if it's a solid brick, like you, if you do the internal wall insulation, you're basically adding the insulation to the inside. So you're going to lose a little bit of the room size, but I think the internal is slightly cheaper. But external means you don't lose any of the room size, but it can make the external of the property look brand new. It can make it look really, really nice on the outside because it's a modern, fresh, clean, new uh, external wall. Um, so they both do the job. Um, but they have different costs. Like you might have a slightly different take on which one you'd rather do. But the cost is pretty significant. So for this one, it's quoted between four and 14,000 pounds. So if you're doing this yourself, it's, it's a really significant cost. Then it goes on to talk about hot water, cylinder insulation, low energy lighting. So light bulbs, honestly, like, you know, that's 20 pounds and it saves you 12 pounds a year. <laughs> so yeah. And then you've got hot water cylinder thermostat, um, and then the heating controls, and that will all take you up to a D. 
And then to get you up to C, so you'd have to do all of that plus replace boiler with new condenser boiler. And again, that is 2.2 to 3,000 quoted by the energy assessor. So, and then it goes all the way up to B. But from a landlord's point of view, really what you're doing is you're, the minimum you want to be doing is getting you to a C. But based on that alone, you can see that it's thousands of pounds worth of work. And that's a significant expense. If you're a portfolio landlord, you've got a few properties, that is a really, really, really big expense. So these grants are so worth considering. So when you know that, for example, there's going to be like 15 grand's worth of work to get a property to uh, a C rating, you can then have this assessment done. And basically for certain things, they get certain grants. So certain amounts for each of the bits that you're doing. Um, and then you need to look at what is the grants available worth uh, compared to the cost. If you have enough grant to cover the costs, then you can potentially have all the work done for free. But in some cases you can have maybe, in fact, we've got a property, I think it's about 15 grand. No, it was about 20 grand's worth of work done for about, I think it's four thousand pounds at maximum that it's been quoted. So whilst it's like oh four four grand's worth of work, that's a lot of money. I'm getting twenty grand's worth of work done, and I'm having other properties that I'm not paying anything for. I'm having other properties. There's one property that I'm paying four hundred pounds for. So you can have overall. I mean, particularly potentially, if you're a portfolio landlord, you can have like over hundred grand's worth of work done, and potentially for maybe a few thousand pounds, maybe. For you've got the right property, the right kind of properties that the grants may be completely free. So that's the kind of work that potentially needs to be done. There is so much more technical aspect to this, which I just don't know. One thing I would say actually that I did forget to mention is that you're looking to raise it by two rating points. So if it's an E, you want to get it to a C. If it's an F, you still want to get it to a C, actually think about it. So it's at least two. So if you have but that doesn't mean if you have a D rating, it doesn't mean you can't apply for a grant, but you would need to get it to a B is my understanding. The other thing you need to look at is the tenant as well, because the grant assessors will be looking at the property to see if they can get it from the rating to, you know, to get to hit all the criteria to be able to get you to the C rating um, and to get as much of the grant as possible so that you're not paying for it yourself. And the, the energy companies are. The other thing is that the, the grant assessors will need to be looking at the tenant because it's these particular grants of the low income tenants um, and or tenants on benefits. So again, the grant assessors will be able to, you know, look at this in more detail, give you more advice, more help. But for what we have in the area, like we have it properties in the Midlands, we specifically market DSOS Welcome, Credit Issues Welcome, Pets Welcome. So the vast majority of our tenants are low income tenants. The properties that we have given to the energy assessor, actually all of them so far have met the criteria. I've also sent a lot of, I mean, I'm in a few networking groups and one in particular I shared all this information to and a few people have spoken to my energy assessor Ramsey and they all seem to qualify as well so it's and it's all free by the way so when you speak to Ram in fact I'll share a little bit about what happened with me because I was originally looking to get wall installation done and I posted on mybuilder.com which I post all my jobs and I'm trying to find tradesmen and Ramsey replied about some wall installation that I was asking and I was getting all these 10 15 grand quotes and he replied saying, did you know that you can get grants potentially for this? So we got on the phone and I said that we were actually, we we're actually hoping to get rent out one of the rooms whilst we got planning permission on this property. And he said, well, actually, if you have a low income tenant, then potentially you can have the work done for free. And I was like, really? And this is a really old dated property. So um, there was a lot of work that needs to be done. So it looks like he's going to save us thousands of pounds worth of work. Um, and get up to the C rating, which is obviously what we need to be doing. So the more I talked to him, and if I'm honest, I was really skeptical. I was like, oh, it's probably not going to, you know, it's probably not going to be relevant for my properties, or maybe it's a scam and all this kind of thing. So I get, I started with one property. I sent him, all he needed was a postcode and a house number. So I sent him a particular property that we were looking at getting the, it, there's um, hot air central heating and the tenants really like it. I quite like the hot air. Um, and they like the electric heaters. We talked to them about gas. There, there just wasn't, it was um, the old heating system. But because we had talked to them about gas, getting gas central heating, but they didn't want it. They said they prefer the, the electric radiators. So we'd left it. And then last year with the energy bills going up so dramatically, it suddenly cost them so, so much money. So we were going to be having gas central heating put in this year. And um, we were getting quotes of, I think, between five and eight thousand pounds to put a new boiler in, put new radiators in, etc. So 
it was when I spoke to Ramsey, I was like, well, what about this house? And I sent him, like I said, the postcode, the house number. He was like, yeah, it qualifies. And he said, but I need to speak to the tenancy if they match the criteria as well. So I was like, absolutely spoke to the tenants. They were more that they're great tenants. They're more than happy to chat to chat to Ramsey. So they had a conversation with him and he was like, yeah. So the next step was then um, they sent a team round to do a full energy assessment. You know how I said that you can do the 40 pound one or you can do the full one. They went, sent someone around to do the full one. And they said, because when we had our EPC, like the cheap one, like the 40 pound one, I think it said it was a E rating. I can't remember. But he said, no, it's actually low G rating. So it's really bad. So we were like, wow, like we need to do obviously a lot to get this done. They looked at the work that needed to be done looked at the grants and they said it's going to cost 400 pounds and he said it would have been free had they not needed to have um i think i mentioned this last week the what did drew call it um like the smart temperature control thing to be able to get it to the c he said otherwise we could have got to the d but to get it to the c we needed that and that's unfortunately we couldn't get a grant for that so you're going to have to pay and i was like it's not a problem 400 pounds for 20 grand's worth of work I think I'm happy with. <laughs> so I was just really, really surprised. And then we were basically the, the renovations are in the diary. And then as soon as the renovations are done, they're going to send us um, the EPC with the, obviously the C rating and then it's done and we're ready and everything's fine. And the tenants are going to be happy, you know, for the summer, sorry, for the winter, they're going to have cheaper bills. They're going to have fancy temperature dials on their phone you know, it's going to be fantastic. So it's just amazing. I just, the whole thing is just amazing. I just really love it. So I've also sent him, he's gone into two other, pro we're doing it in stages. So we've sent him two of the properties. Um, he's spoken to the tenants. They, they meet the criteria. He said that one of them, one of them, they've done a, what's it called? The drill test because they needed to see, because it's every, there was a couple of things. There was a couple of things that were a bit borderline. So he's gone and done a drill test and he's then speaking to someone to work out the best way of doing it. But he said it looks good. Like, you know, we should be able to get a lot of work done. That's it. That's he gets really excited about an uh, electric ha like heating and stuff like that. The, the really like because he said the more work that's needed, the better the grants and the more you can, you know, it, it's harder for them to find stuff to, or to get the grants if it's only a little bit of work. Like if you've got the main things done, it's a little bit harder. But if there's some big stuff done, then there's loads of grants available and he gets very excited. <laughs> so with this one, it was, there's no gas at the property. So we had electric boiler, we had electric heating, um, but it was a very, we've gone through a bit of a pro, anyway, we've gone through a bit of a process with that, the heating system. Um, and again, we had get, we had been getting quotes to get it um, replaced as part of the EP. I mean, anyway, but particularly with the, the EPC stuff. Um, so he's gone and he got very excited because there's loads of stuff that he can do. Um, and the tenant qualifies. Um, the Then another one was the semi-detached. So he, that was the one that he was like, actually, you're going to have to, because of the the wall, it, the cost of the works is going to be significantly high because it's three walls because it's semi-detached. So the grant is the same. He's like, it would have been the same grant if it had been a terrace property or a semi-detached. So because it's the same grant, but more work is needing to be done, it means that we are potentially, he's going to confirm the numbers, but he said fourth, and he tends to be quite prudent with the numbers. So he was like up to £4,000. So we're just going to wait to find out for sure. He's going to get his team around to do a full energy assessment and he's going to let me know. But again, I'm still so happy with £4,000 because it was going to cost us so much more and it's going to add loads of value to the property. It's just great. It really, I just... <laughs> I'm so excited about this. And, um, and Drew, <laughs> this is probably a good thing Drew's not here today because I keep talking about this. I just think it's so wonderful. That's the process I'm going through. So yeah, on the back of talking to Ramsey and he's so amazing. Like he's really, he sent me loads of information. He takes time to talk things through with me. He takes time to call, you know, when I, you know, say this is my property friends, you know, even like Drew, like Drew has clients who um, are also very keen to do it. Like everyone's had very good experiences. So I just feel like, you know, spread the love. <laughs> I think that's everything I wanted to cover. It's kind of short and sweet, I guess. The probably main thing, probably main thing to talk about is to give you Ramsey's details. When I started talking to the, the ladies in my networking group that I'm part of, I said to Ramsey, what's the best way? Like, should they just call you? And he said, well, get, get like, take their numbers and ask what's a good time to call. And then, so basically I can send Ramsey um, 
their phone number and what a good time to call so he can then call them rather than just giving out his number sometimes life gets in the way it's much easier to do it that way um so if you want me to ask Ramsey to call you send me your contact details and a good time to call otherwise you're very welcome to call Ramsey yourself um his name is actually I've just realized his surname I don't know how to pronounce his surname but he's with (laughs) Grant Assessments I think Grant Assessments Limited, I think. But yeah, his name's Ramsey. I'll put the, the information in the show notes. But he his phone number, uh, I don't know whether I'm suddenly like, I don't know whether to give out his email. I should maybe have checked this, whether his email, his phone number or whatnot. But um, yeah, basically he's grantassessments.com. His name's Ramsey, R-A-M-Z-E-Y at grantassessments.com. Um, and his phone number, I'll give out his mobile number, why not? Is <laughs> 07729 um, Or like I said, if you just want to send me the information, I'll pass it on to Ramsey. He, he can give you a call. Uh, my contact details are, um, you can go to propertyantpress.com and there's a contact form or you can email me, anna at annapierce.com or you can contact me through any of my social medias. Probably Instagram is the easiest if you just want to direct message me. Uh, or TikTok, actually, they've got some quite good... Um, messaging as well (sighs) so that's it I'll tell you what these episodes are so much shorter when I'm on my own (laughs) but I think that's pretty much everything I think it's bit for me I'm I do apologize there's not much of the technical side of things because I it's just not you know I I'm still learning from Ramsey and I hope I guess this should come heavily caveated with me but you know I I'm sure Ramsey will probably listen to this and be like no (laughs) So I'm just trying to give you a feel of it and how my understanding is how it works. But I think in all honesty, your best bet is to have a chat with Ramsey, talk about your properties, talk about, you know, um, how, what the process is. And also I probably should say that this is all free. Like having conversation with Ramsey is free. Even having the energy assessors go over to assess the property is free. You know, Ramsey will have a chat with your tenants, um, to see if they meet the criteria he can do some online he can do everything can be done remotely he can do an online research to see if it, meet, it meets the criteria like the property does he can have a quick chat with the tenants he's very um what's the word i'm looking for he's uh very diplomatic i don't think that's the right word but he's very you know he's he's very considerate in how he talks to the tenants as well the way that we're talking to our tenants about this is literally there's I'm literally just saying there's a we can get potentially get some grants to make the house more energy efficient um it'll mean it's warmer it'll mean it's cheaper to run and it won't cost you anything um we're going to send an energy assess around if that's okay with you and they just need to have a quick chat with you first because they've got a couple of questions like what do you think that's literally all I'm saying and all our tenants are obviously a bit like yes please (laughs) cheaper bills yes please gonna cost me nothing yes please um, and obviously the renovations, like we're, the one that we're having done, which is quite big renovations, um, we had some concerns because one of our tenants um, has uh, some mental health issues and she wasn't going to be able to move out of the property. And when I spoke to Ramsey, I said, is it OK for them to stay in the property? Do they need to move out? And he was like, no, they can stay. So and it doesn't take very long to do the work. So it's it's a minor, well, relatively minor inconvenience and then huge benefits for everyone. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop going on about it. I feel like I'm fangirling over these EPC graphs. <laughs> but if you have any questions, you're very welcome to contact me and all the contact details I gave before. Um, we're back next week. I need to chat to Drew about what we're going to be covering next week. Um, I think this is episode 10, I believe, of season four. We're going to do another episode next week. And then we're going to have episode 12 is going to be the final episode of this season. We thought we might do a live property and press podcast episode so I had I need to think of logistics but I think what it'll be is we'll record as usual because we we share the episodes to TikTok we also obviously share them to uh, Spotify Apple Podcasts, all the usual platforms but I think we're also going to live stream them so that it will be very interactive and we're going to do listener questions so if you have any questions that you'd like to ask us but anything we've talked about in this season or any other season or if there's just general property questions you'd like us to answer then you're welcome to send them to us in advance or you can join them on join the live and um, ask questions there so I need to think about logistics whether to do it on a platform live like Instagram live TikTok live or whether to do it a Zoom call I need to sort out logistics but I will keep you posted because obviously we won't be recording on the Monday when it drops we'll be recording before and then I'll be uploading them to all the different platforms for the Monday. 
So yeah, make sure you maybe have a look on my socials, my website. I'll try and share some information with you for when that'll be. Um, but like I said, if you have any questions in the meantime, send them to to the, um, we probably won't do them ne- unless it's something urgent. We won't do it next week. We'll do it for the live video. But yeah, please do send questions in. Otherwise we're going to have to just, I mean, I'll probably put on my Instagram stories questions and maybe do that. But anyway. Okay. But yes, thank you so much. And yeah, it's a bit weird not having Drew here, but hopefully he'll be back next week. Have a beautiful day and have a beautiful week and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.